Hello, everyone. Uh, let me jump right in. Let me share my screen. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, this is uh, our UI. And uh, in the UI, uh, you can actually add additional labels uh, to test cases. Uh, for that, you can uh, click on this plus label in here and add the label saying my test label. If you press enter, did that press enter? Oops. Sorry, I was uh, clicked somewhere else. Many, too many times. Anyway, so if you uh, uh, reload the page, you'll be able to see a uh, label added uh, to your test case. Let's give it a second uh, to load. Um, and anyway, so that's, uh, that's one thing. Uh, and the next is, uh, not only that, but we also will allow you to see reports by label. So if you go to report session here on the left, as you can see, it says reports. If you just click on it. Uh, you'll see uh, just our standard reports where you'll see what the percentages overall, um, what was breakdown, uh, by label of number of, of tests overall and uh, different results by different browsers, specific browsers. And this is what I was talking about. Uh, is, uh, as you can see here, you can see breakdown by label. What's going on? You can hover over, you can see how many tests passed in that particular label and uh, what's going on in general. And as you can see, this is our my test label. And we have one, one failed test related to that because we just added that, that label to that test. So it's, as you can see, it's pretty dynamic. So you can basically uh, break your application into sections and then you can see the report uh, by those sections using the labels. All right, so this is one. Uh, and a second thing that we will be talking today is uh, passing parameters. And specifically uh, passing parameters uh, by hooks. Uh, let me go back in here. Uh, uh, as you can see here, if you expand it, there are tests with hooks. Uh, you can add scripts which will execute before the whole test suite uh, will, will start and after uh, test suite is completed. The, uh, the goal of this is to help you to set up test data and clean up test data before you run all of your tests, because as, as you remember, all the tests run in parallel. Uh, so you, like, if you need to uh, to do something across the board for all or vast majority of your tests, it might be convenient to just run uh, before test suite. Keep in mind that uh, it might run on a different server compared to all other tests. Because as I mentioned yet again, uh, everything is executed dynamically uh, on, on, on your servers. However, uh, you can, when you create this, this uh, 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 test suite hook before test suite, you can create test data in there and you can use that as the parameters on your test. We can actually do it right here. We don't have to create a new test suite, but uh, let's do it in a, for in a Twitter one. 
uh, for Twitter test suite. And uh, what would we do here? Uh, like this is test suite, which shows uh, how to do signups. So the different signup tests in here and uh, testing the forms. Uh, in this particular case, uh, the use case was that uh, we were passing uh, we were passing uh, name, day, and month uh, into test, and uh, this data came from test data sets, as we discussed uh, last time at, into, uh, during one of the previous uh, videos. However, uh, uh, we can actually uh, uh, pass those parameters, uh, create uh, something in passwords parameters from, from uh, before test suite. So let us do that. Uh, let us expand it. Let's add before test suite. And uh, I want to look up how do I uh, save value, right? I want to manually do it. However, you probably would actually do it as uh, grabbing it from where from the screen, somewhere from a screen or doing something like this. Um, setting up for test. So we need name and we need day nine and July as month. Okay, so let's do it as at that. Great, so we have created a before test suite. Uh, uh, looking here. So the good thing is now uh, we can actually, uh, let's just literally copy paste this test case, which uses various parameters. We can create a test case which will use uh, uh, use that data. All right. So let's add that one. It will probably uh, run, uh, fail to run, but it doesn't matter. So now, uh, as you can see here, like this test is uh, very weird because uh, what's happening is uh, uh, it uses the parameters which are not provided anywhere. We didn't specify them in a test. We didn't specify them in any kind of uh, uh, test data we did, or test data set. Uh, we didn't specify them uh, in, in a rule and called the rule to set them up, nothing. So we didn't do anything. Uh, however, uh, those parameters are, will come from a test suite hook when you do full retest. Uh, specifically in this particular case, as you can see, uh, it failed because name wasn't set up. That is because uh, precisely, and we can cancel it because it will fail on others as well. Uh, this is expected behavior because that would come from before test suite and before test suite will be executed, then you run the whole test suite. And to do that, uh, you go to test suite details <clears throat> or you can trigger it uh, uh, using API in, in CI CD section if you have integration with your Jenkins or something like that. But in this test with details, where is this button saying rerun? 
And this is where you can change the landing URL. If, for example, you want to redo the retest on a different environment uh, temporarily uh, at any point, if you kick a rerun, it will restart all the tests. But yes. Uh, but before running all the tests, it will execute before test suite. So let's see. And uh, let's expand that. So here uh, you'll be able to see that uh, first before test suite will execute. It will set up the parameters that we need. And by the way, this example is probably is not a good one because you could have, if you just need uh, static data like this, your best bet is just to use test data. Uh, but sometimes you need to uh, go through certain steps in order to, let's say, create a new user and then pass that user an ID and password into all other tests. That would be an example how you would why would you need a script instead of just constant uh, constant in all of your tests and then uh, right now as you can see uh, uh, test suite hook completed and uh, every single test which will be executed later on uh, will get the data of which had been produced by this before uh, test suite hook like uh, all of them, so a couple of them in, in a queue right now, and that's one I'm starting. Oh, sorry, one and starting it uh, to always running. So they uh, they got test data uh, from this as well. So basically, it's actually a combination. Uh, so first, you will get data from test data and from test data sets, like in this, for example, example here. Uh, then uh, it will be overrided with uh, overridden with whatever uh, you have provided. Then you triggered this in your uh, uh, CI call if you trigger it from uh, from Jenkins in your CI CD, and uh, then like this before the suite will execute, it might override it yet again. And if inside uh, your specific code, you are overriding it in the code, you'll override it yet again. So everything as you would expect, but in our particular case, what we care about is whatever data had been set in here, I hope I provided the names of variables correctly, will be passed into, um, into test cases and uh, we will be able to uh, to use that during the test cases and in our particular case this one didn't work because the ui was different okay so here we go okay so this is exactly what i'm talking about here Uh, as you can see, uh, it used Peter as a name, even though nowhere in the test we have specified uh, name uh, in the test or nor were uh, any test data which says that name should be Peter. Uh, it's just not there. And uh, this data is actually coming from uh, specifically uh, the data which had been generated by before test suite. Uh, and once again, this is uh, for uh, mostly for the setup use cases. Uh, okay, so this one succeeded, but uh, the uh, Chrome would Chrome failed because it showed different UI. Um, point being, the data had been all passed, and you can see it in here. So July 9th, exactly what we were passing in here. Uh, so the use case for this is uh, any kind of setup. Sometimes you need to create some users. 
sometimes you need to fill up certain tables which will be used uh, by your test suite and uh, in some cases you actually do want to do that because uh, uh, because otherwise uh, um, uh, like you wouldn't be able to, uh, to 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 run your tests because you you might be getting in a situation where once you run your test, you cannot reuse the same data. So you need to uh, generate unique data. It might be it might be steps in the UI. It might be some kind of an API call to the backend uh, to to generate and set up all the data you need for your tests. Uh, but point being is you will be able to set it up. Uh, and get the data of which you need, set it up into, into variables, and then use those variables in any of the tests in order to be able to refer to things you have just created. Then that is it. Just uh, very straightforward. And I'm open to questions. Do you have any questions about using the labels to organize or um, to create reports? Or else the second topic was um, passing parameters by hooks before the test suite. Does anybody have any questions? We can also open your microphone. It's just a few people, only a few people here. It's a very quiet group, Artem. There's a question. Were there any plans to make folder structure for test case organization? So maybe a folder for the labels. Uh, so labels uh, is a more versatile and uh, convenient way to manage your tests. The problem with uh, folder structure is if a test uh belongs to multiple folders at the same time it just makes it uh, uh like impossible to to find it for example uh one if one person put uh, the test in one folder but you uh, from your perspective it should be another you're trying to find it in another folder and you cannot find it uh, so basically, uh, wherefore we decided to go for labels at this time, but yes, we are considering uh, releasing uh, eventually a folder structure. It probably will come at some point in addition to labels. We're just trying to understand what will be the best way of dealing with it. Yeah, 